Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're out at the range with a Walther pistol. It's called the PPS or the Police Pistol Slim. This handgun was developed in Germany by the company of Walther or Walther or however you guys always try to correct it for me. I'm an American so I say Walther and uh, it was developed in Germany and it was developed in the early 2000s. It finally came to market right around 2007. The first gun to come to market was a little bit different than the one I have here. This is the M2. The first one had the magazine release as like a little flapper. If you use other European style handguns, you'll know what I'm talking about, but a little lever that sets right alongside the trigger guard on both sides. And some folks like that particular magazine release. I don't. A lot of people asked for a American release, which is what the M2 has, which is what I'm holding. And that means the gun uh, drops its magazine when this button is depressed. So this is an M2. I'm always on the lookout for the perfect summer carry handgun. And why is that? Well, in the summer, you tend to wear lighter clothing. You wear t-shirts versus coats. You wear shorts versus pants. And it's nice to have a small light handgun that's easily concealable under something lightweight like a t-shirt. And so that's why folks always are out there looking for a summer carry. Because I get a lot of people saying, well, why don't you just carry the same gun all the time? Well, sometimes I just want to run to the supermarket and I have flip flops and, and shorts on. I just throw a t-shirt on and I just want to stick a gun in my waistband, typically appendix or in my pocket with a holster, of course. I don't want to worry about putting on my big heavy daily carry gun, which it's only really warm here where I live, live maybe three months out of the year. So that's about as much as I would use a handgun like this, about three months out of the year. Well, that's what made me look at the P365, the SIG. And that's why I was so let down when the gun failed us so catastrophically. This Walther PPS I've had in my collection for quite some time. It's been a candidate in the running for quite a while. Probably my biggest problem with the handgun, and this varies between users, is the fact that the slide stop slide release sets so far back. It's really far back. I'm used to having slide stop slide releases up here where the takedown lever is just behind that. With it setting here with my big ape hands, my thumb is constantly touching that lever and it keeps it from locking open the last shot fired. Is that a catastrophic problem? No. Uh, the gun goes click instead of bang. I just immediately drop the magazine knowing what just happened, put a fresh one in, cycle the, you know, run the slide and you know, the gun's ready to go again. But it's nice to have the gun lock open. Now, if I consciously train myself to keep my thumb away from it, by hooking it over onto my other, my other thumb, I won't have a problem. But as soon as my thumb goes alongside the gun like that, you can see that it's gonna go ahead and touch that slide lock. So it's just in a horrible spot for me. And that may be the case with other people that may have large hands. Now, as these guns ship from the factory, they come with a six, seven, or eight round magazine. The ones that I've purchased came with a six rounder and a seven rounder, and I had to purchase the eight rounder separately. I want to thank the guys at Gun Mag Warehouse this afternoon. They don't pay us to plug them, but they do send us extra magazines so we can film these videos and not have to stop so often to reload. So I want to thank those guys for sending out the magazines for this video. They sent us a few extra mags for this handgun and then the new one I just recently acquired, which this video is about. But first, let's shoot the original. This is one of the guns that I've carried in the past and uh, it's a reliable handgun. It's an ergonomic handgun. It's a very slim handgun, but it just wasn't to my liking. It was missing something. I think that something was the location of the slide stop. All right, see, I made a conscious effort to keep my thumb away from the, the slide stop and the gun locked open. Notice how flat the handgun shoots. It's a very flat shooting, comfortable handgun and probably one of the best kept secrets in terms of concealed carry guns. Next, I want to show you guys this thing. This is what I just recently acquired. This is the PPS. I just want to check, make sure it's clear. No magazine, empty chamber. This is a factory PPS, and it now has a factory red dot sight. This is a shield sight, which some people have had bad luck with, myself included. I have one of the shield sights that you can choose between multiple uh, reticles. And that thing keeps switching between reticles. Sometimes it just shuts off during use and other times it just turns on. Uh, and Mr. Guns and Gears reported some problems with his shield red dot sights. And so that's a little bit concerning for me, but I'm gonna test this thing, put you know at least a thousand rounds through it. But if the sight should fail, Walther has ingeniously designed the whole setup so that there's a little notch cut through the sight and the standard non-suppressor height sights still offer 
a co-witness. I have a full sight picture with my iron sights. So if the red dot should fail me, I have my irons to fall back to. All right, so this one I have an eight round magazine in. And guys, honestly, I think red dot sights will revolutionize handgun, fighting handguns, much like they revolutionized fighting rifles today, not having some sort of force multiplier like a red dot sight or a magnified optic on a rifle is almost unheard of. Very few people still shoot iron sights, yet most people still shoot iron sights on pistols. And I think that's gonna change, and this is definitely a step in that right direction. So there you guys go. Again, kept my thumb away from it, perfect function. The red dot's working just fine. And this is what we're gonna be shooting this afternoon. So stick around, it should be a fun video. As with a lot of modern firearms, unfortunately this one is geared more towards a right-handed shooter than a left-handed shooter, especially with the American magazine release. At least the lefties with the M1 or the original PPS had the option of dropping the magazine uh, without having to switch the controls around on the gun. But this also lacks a slide stop slide release on the right hand side of the pistol. So again, this gun definitely caters towards the right handed shooter. Now I didn't bring out any six round magazines simply because I absolutely hate them. I don't like guns where my pinky dangles off in space. You'll notice the cutout right here, the, the six rounders set flush. So my pinky just dangles and I hate it. So much so I don't even know where the six round, mag, or six round mags are. I uh, pretty much just throw them away. Uh, so I'll never use them. I instead prefer the seven rounders and the eight rounders. These are the seven rounders that Gun Mag Warehouse sent over to us. Now, if you put an eight or seven rounder in it, you can put one in the pipe. And so now either this would be an eight rounder. And of course, if I put an eight round magazine in it, one in the pipe, it's a nine rounder. It gets us pretty close to the 10 rounds I was looking for, like with the SIG P, uh, or yeah, the P365. The downside is, is the P365 had the option for a 12 round magazine where this doesn't, that's what I was gonna carry with it. And again, that's why I was so let down by the P365. Let's do a little bit more shooting with the RDS. Now, the thing that's nice about the RDS, first of all, it takes a little bit of getting used to. The first time people pick them up, they, they point high and they can't see the dot and they can't figure out why. So it's an acquired taste. What you have to do is pick, pick up the sight picture like you normally would, and lo and behold, there's the red dot. So when you're using a red dot sight on a pistol, just keep in mind, don't focus on the dot. Try to find the sight picture and the dot will just be there. All right, that's how you're gonna speed yourself up in sight acquisition. Once you find that dot, the shots become quickly. I mean, recovery from recoil is very fast and that dot settles right back down. And it's much easier, at least for me, to pick that red dot up for the second and third follow-up shot. And me riding the slide stop again. Uh, I think I got one more magazine here. Which pocket did I stick it in? All right. And I did it again, even though I'm trying not to. And guys, that's why I wound up ultimately not carrying the handgun. I just can't seem to train myself to get my thumb away from that silly slide stop. It's just in a really, really bad location. Otherwise, the ergonomics are really, really nice. Let's disassemble little Walther, but first, a word from our sponsors. Zebra Cakes, America's favorite treat. You can buy a whole box for $1.99. They're nutritious and delicious. Actually, guys, <laughs> we did a live stream um, last week with, for our Patreons, and Jason mentioned it was his favorite road food and a whole box, not a box like this, let's say a whole case of these showed up at the shop today at Copper Custom. And we wanna thank that viewer for, uh, for sending us all the zebra cakes because they are pretty darn good. All right, <laughs> let me talk while I have food in my mouth. To take the gun apart, first of all, you're gonna drop the magazine out uh, and lock the slide to the rear and make sure that your weapon is empty and swallow your zebra cake. Weapon's clear. I'm gonna put the slide forward Right here you have, right here by my index finger, it's much like a Glock. You have the little 
tabs that are serrated so they have a good texture to them. You're just going to pull down on those. But first, you have to kind of slightly pull the slide to the rear. The RDS helps in doing that. Just break the action back. And now you can pull down on those tabs and pull the trigger and the slide comes right off the frame. Fairly conventional setup. It is a striker fired assembly, has the uh, dingus on the trigger for an inertial trigger safety. And you have a plunger system that pre prevents the, the striker from firing until the trigger is pulled. The dingus keeps the trigger from being pulled should it fall on its rear end, in theory. And we have a standard double nested recoil spring and then this little teeny tiny barrel. So there, there you guys go. A little miniature Browning action. Simplified, of course. Very similar to what would have been used on the Browning High Power, which was an evolution of the 1911. Most modern automatics can trace their heritage back to that particular handgun. Put it back together, you just set everything in there just like that. You have metal slide rails that sit inside a polymer frame. The serial number is on the metal part, I believe. Yeah, there it is. It's right there on the metal part, just above the trigger. Put the slide on. Pull it to the rear a little bit, and it'll lock itself back together. Function check, and the gun is ready to go back to the range and shoot. So, very familiar disassembly process, except for the zebra cake. It's a little bit extra. Go ahead, Jason. Have one. They're delicious. On the stump, I have an eight round magazine on the left and a seven round magazine on the right. So you can see just how much larger the extra round gives you in terms of having eight versus seven. So it is just a little bit bigger. It gives you a little bit better grip on the gun, but it also takes away a little bit from the concealability. Here's the eight rounder in the gun. So. Also, there's a swell right here where my index finger is, and it's textured, so that gives you a place to strip the magazine out of the gun should you have a malfunction. Also, on the top of the slide, there's a cut in the hood of the, the barrel, and that's your loaded chamber indicator. I don't even know why they bother doing this, guys, because, I mean, in broad daylight under perfect conditions like today, yes, I can look down in that little witness hole and see brass, and tell that the gun's loaded, but in the dark, you have no real indicator. Some guns have loaded chamber indicators that pop up, like the Springfield XD series. However, those you can run your finger across the top and feel that the gun's loaded. However, I've seen those things get dirty very quickly, and they'll lock in the upward position, and they'll tell you the gun's loaded when it's not, which can be a very dangerous thing. So really, you have to resort to, if you want to check your weapon, if it's loaded or not, you're just going to have to do a press check, which a lot of the top trainers are saying is a no-go. You know, five years ago, it was all the rage. Now, today, they're telling you not to do it, but there's serrations right here in the front. You can pull the slide slightly to the rear. You can see brass, and now you know your weapon's ready, and then you can put it in your holster and not worry about having an empty weapon. All right. So the little tiny gun shoots really, really well with this red dot sight, and it's nice having a nice clear iron sight picture as well. Flat shooting, very comfortable. Now, what we're shooting right now, guys, are some 115 grain plus P jacketed hollow points. That's what that first magazine was. Now this is a seven round magazine. So this stuff's a little bit hotter and it is a hollow point, but we're checking for reliability. Another seven rounds of the same hollow points. And again, it's just so easy to pick that red dot up. More of the hollow points. And guys, we're at 20 yards, and it's making it super simple to get those hits. And I rode the slide stop. No, no, Tim, stop doing that. Get my thumb out of the way. And I 
got my thumb out of the way that time. So those were all hollow points, 115 grain, and the gun fed them just fine. We have some uh, HSTs out here. We'll run those through it for you guys to see what the reliability is with those. But yeah, overall, it's a very awesome little pistol, striker fired pistol. And so far, the red dot sight's holding up just fine after four or 500 rounds. Let's run a few different types of hollow points through the little Walther and see how it performs. First of all, we have a few of the HSTs left over. I should have eight rounds of these loaded into the pistol right now. Let me show you guys. Those are the HSTs. Okay. Should have one in the chamber already. Let's see if I can keep my thumb in the right spot. Ah. <laughs> Not too good at hitting them at that distance. Okay, these are Remington Golden Sabres. All right, you can see there's a slightly different bullet profile to the Golden Sabres. Let's see how it feeds these. All right, me riding the slide stop. Now we only have five of these left. We found them in Peaches. These are the rounds I do like to carry. And these are the Underwoods using the Lehigh Extreme Defender. And this is the Underwood loading right here. All right, let's see how these screwdriver tip bullets feed. I've never had a problem with them in the past. Wow, those are hot. Wow, those things, the report is in, 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 noticeably louder. Now those little guys are stepping out of a standard size barrel at around 1,400 feet per second, I think. And uh, yeah, these are plus P's, 1,475 is the advertised velocity. I love these rounds. Uh, out of a you know, four inch barrel, I've seen them actually defeat level two body armor and, and continue on to go through uh, ballistics gel, 18 inches of ballistics gel, so they're nasty little rounds, but they work fine in the little Walther. All right, last up, we have two more seven round magazines, and these are just the standard Freedom 115 grain jacket hollow points. I'm riding that slide stop, even when I'm trying not to. Huh, all right. I'm trying not to ride that slide stop, but I'm still doing it, weird. But the gun shoots great. I finally uh, settled down and could hit the target <laughs> for whatever reason with the HSTs. I had a few misses. I redeemed myself in the last few magazines. But uh, yeah, so far so good. And I'm really liking the red dot sight. Now the red dot sight has about a two to three year life. It does, believe it or not, use a standard CR2032, uh, I think it is. It's a standard battery, which it doesn't look like this is big enough to house it. But you, it's always on. There's no power buttons. It's always on, which is fantastic from a concealed carry standpoint and you just have to set an alarm in your phone every year change the batteries uh, you can't access the battery without taking the sight off so when you take the sight off and replace the battery make sure you re-zero the gun because it's probably going to shift zero you just have to do a quick adjustment to it but you can do a, a sanity check by making sure the dot sets on top of the iron sights it's kind of nice
it's not grouping about at 20 yards. That's the 100 grain Fiocchi frangible ammunition. I hope you guys enjoyed coming out and hanging out with us on the range, shooting the Walther PPS M2 with the RSMC red dot sight from Shield. I'm a little bit worried about the red dot sight. Other reports of the sight failure, like from Mr. Guns and Gear, have me concerned. I also have another version of this sight, a more complex version of the sight, that I too have had some problems with. But so far, about 600 and some odd rounds fired through this gun. Uh, this sight has not failed me, but I do have my irons as a backup. The package deal with the red dot sight is $699. That's MSRP. I picked this one up impulsively for $560 from a local gun shop, a competitor. Yeah, I know. I'm feeding the competition. The only thing that I really, really don't like about the gun is the fact that I cannot seem to get around riding the slide stop with my thumb. I don't typically carry a spare magazine. I'll carry it with an eight round magazine in it, one in the pipe for a total of nine rounds. But if I did carry a spare magazine, if I had to perform a reload in the field, chances are I would get click, no bang, and have to you know, drop the mag, put another uh, magazine in it, rack the slide, less than ideal. Something to think about if you have large hands like I do, if you're considering the Walther PPS M2 as a, a potential carry gun. But other than that, extremely reliable, everything we feed it. I have not found one round of 9mm ammunition this thing won't eat. Not just this one, but also my earlier one that I bought years ago. So, interesting gun. Check it out. See if you like it. If it's for you, this one may not be for me. But I'll carry it until I find something better. Guys, if you'd like to uh, help us here at the Military Arms Channel, help support us, that is, you can do that by becoming a patron supporter. Over on Patreon, we try to give back to our supporters. We give you live chats every week so you can talk to Jason and I in real time and ask us questions. We do t-shirt giveaways from companies like Forge from Freedom. If you'd like to support us that way, it's another great way to do it. We do have a link down below to both Patreon and to Forge from Freedom where you can pick up shirts like this one and many others. But you can also swing by and check out Copper Custom, coppercustom.com. It's our online store. We have a lot of great products at great prices. If you become a patron supporter, you'll find that Copper Custom offers some blowout prices, some prices you won't find any cheaper anywhere else on the internet. And we do that just for our patrons. Guys, thanks for 10 years of support and watching us. And we'll talk to you guys soon. See what I mean, guys? It just won't lock open for me, and I was trying. Oh, I want to love you, but I just can't. But it's still a lot better than the SIG P365. <laughs>